Hello, I'm Larry Fryer, and welcome to Fortville Feeders. Fortville Feeders is the premier parts handling and feeding system in North America. Fortville Feeders was launched by Michael Krause in 1979, and he started this business in his own garage. We now operate in a 60,000 square foot facility dedicated strictly to parts feeding excellence. Our engineers are expert designers who combine years of parts handling knowledge with the latest technologies. Our toolers are very high skilled craftsmen specializing in parts feeding systems. We have our own in-house machining and milling capabilities including CNC milling, EDM drilling, and water jet direct to print cutting. Welcome to the Fortville Feeders Lunch and Learn. Fortville Feeders is the engineered solution. There was a time where I just kept picking up the phone and people were coming to me stating the fact that uh, they felt as if uh, we were a little bit more established than some of our competition in regards to vibratory feed systems. And they said, uh, and I quote, you are a little bit more of an engineered type solution. And I kept getting that phone call. At that point, we decided to change our tagline to the engineered solution. We were the first in our industry to purchase a licensed seat on AutoCAD engineering. We also are the first vibratory feeder company to purchase a water jet and uh, we have an EDM machine. So we, we really have kind of led the industry as far as our technology is concerned for vibratory feed systems and vibratory feeder companies. We also have a, a crew of just under 70 employees and a complete staff of mechanical engineers as well as electrical engineers. The most important part of the Fortville feeder system is the handoff from the discharge end of our track to you, the customer. So the parts feeding is just fine for us, but it's that transition from us to you that's most critical. And our competition would often quote uh, a vibratory feeder bowl, bulk handling, tracking, dropping parts off the end of the track into a box, not much to it. Our key importance on our feed system is what happens at the end of that track? What is the handshake between Fortville feeders and you, the customer? So what is that takes place in that transition? Our goal is to take product from bulk and transition it and hand it off and isolate it so that the customer can do whatever process they need to do. Let's talk a little bit about project management. At Fort Real Feeders, we have one project manager that will be assigned to you at the time that you send in your request for quotation. So that project manager will define what exactly you need as far as that project is concerned, and he'll stick with you through the entire quoting process. Revision number four, revision number five, however many revisions it takes to satisfy the request that you have for that application. At the point that we're the selected vendor and that job becomes a, an order, we have various tools that we utilize when we, we do the quoting process and we have a thumb drive here that we'll issue to everybody that has a, a couple of cheat uh, sheets on it. There's one that's a bowl hopper capacity uh, formula that we have that's on the thumb drive that you type in the various dimensions of the part. So the large large dimension, the middle dimension, smallest dimension, for instance, and you put in the cycle time of uh, 20 parts per minute or 400 parts per minute, and it will kick out the bowl size that's required for that various specific size part. Uh, and it'll also show, and you can see here in the sheet, it'll show the uh, capacity of that vibratory bowl, and it shows all of our standard hoppers and the capacity for those hoppers as well. So. Uh, you can kind of piece together a ballpark of the size of the componentry that would be utilized for your specific application by utilizing this format. It's important to note also if you're typing in this information and the formula is trying to make a decision between let's just say a 15 inch bowl and an 18 inch bowl that we do size this to where it leans towards the larger of the two sizes. So we try to get a as much real estate as possible. So if it's, if it's borderline between a 15 and an 18, it's going to lean itself towards the 18 inch bowl. So there's also an example of what our quotation looks like. Our competition always puts a, a quotation out that's kind of a one sheet uh, with just a, a, a few line items on it. There's an awful lot of gray area as to who's providing what and who's responsible for what. You can see with our quotation in this example, um, it's very thorough and it goes through each of the various components with uh, six or seven subtopics under each component as to what all we're providing um, with each and every component. 
Our customers are very pleased with the fact that there is not a lot of gray areas in regards to who is responsible for what uh, when it comes to, to our quotation. And included in this is our terms and conditions, payment terms and so forth, all some very standard stuff. So once that quotation becomes an order and it becomes a, a project for us, we uh, ship out to you an order confirmation sheet. And you'll see this example here. And that uh, is some of the critical information for tracking our project. And uh, there's various responsibilities you, the customer, has to adhere to and various responsibilities that us at Fortville have to adhere to. And we assign dates to those. And uh, of course, purchase order requirements, bulk supplied uh, parts, for instance, uh, approval drawings submitted to you. We try to turn all of our approval drawings, uh, turn them around within a three-day period. We'd like you to turn them around just as quickly as possible. Once you turn around that assigned approval process or approval drawing, that's when our clock starts ticking as far as delivery is concerned. And that's what we're trying to achieve is we want to make sure that we hit all these required dates so that we don't miss this required FAT uh, final runoff date here at our facility. This is an example of our, our parts board at our facility. We encourage everybody to possibly come visit our facility, but this is our parts board and every feed system that we've built. We have um, our parts uh, on this board here. We have a complete breakdown of profit and loss on these parts, as well as video and images of all the systems that we've built. So when you send a part in, we will often bring it over to the board here and try to find a, a similar type application. We also do everything in uh, 3D modeling, and you can see uh, we've got examples here of the various uh, 3D models that we provide for you. We do a complete plan and elevation of those drawings, uh, and you can see those examples, and then we also um, will show the various componentry as well. Um, now, the first round of drawings, we basically are just trying to claim real estate here. So we're trying to say these are gonna be the overall dimensions and size of this componentry. Uh, we're not going to get into the overall heavy detail of the mechanization and so forth, but you can see in these drawings we do get around to that as the project progresses. It's making sure that we don't have any interferences and so forth with your equipment. We are currently using Inventor version 2020 for our design software. That software allows us to design a feeder bowl from top to bottom. We team up a design engineer with one of our bowl toolers and we take all those various compound angles and all that tooling and we design the bowl from top to bottom on that software. That software package has flattened out all those compound angles. It's sent to our water jet. Our water jet cuts out all the various components and it becomes a kit at that point. That kit is then uh, duplicated for as many feed systems as you need. If you uh, order a duplicate system, that feed system is stored on our server and can be duplicated at any time. Now we get into a little bit more of some of the mechanization, and this is really where, where Fortville hangs its hat. And this is where we, uh, we try to really shine as far as mechanisms are concerned. Again, uh, we have the capability with all of our mechanical engineers to get involved with uh, more mechanisms than, than any of our competition is concerned. Um, one of our first examples I'd like to show you is this, uh, this rivet feed system. This is a project we won. Um, and it was truly um, from our concepting, from our project manager, and how we went about the application. The customer needed 14 rivets um, uh, to be an escape and blow to a receiver for the customer to do an assembly project. Um, our competition came with very large bowls and multiple lines, and uh, um, it was very bulky and uh, a lot of moving parts. We uh, came at it a little bit different. We simplified everything behind the mechanism, so we came with a bulk supply hopper, a very simple bowl feeding the rivet down a single lane track down to a mechanism which was a servo-driven star wheel. And you can see we sliced all those rivets off, and once we had all 14 sliced off, we escaped and blew all of them at one time to a receiver block. Uh, the customers bought, I think, three systems since then. But you can see a very small, compact, and complete system. There's the drawing package, but I also like to show the photos as well. This was when it was in our, our uh, quality assurance department during runoff. But you can see the tubes, and we, had, uh, we also had um, ring proxies on there showing that the parts did uh, escape and blow and meet their destination through the tubing. 
Next slide shows an, another star wheel type application. This was a Ford was the end user on this application. And it's a, um, just a uh, ABB robotics. They needed to pick up these parts in a specific bolt hole circle. Again, very clean, very simple, good application for us. Next application is a, is a cam oriented one to two shuttle. This is for Briggs and Stratton. It's a design that they really like. Um, different than some of our standard cross shuttle type designs. But again, a cam design that, that Briggs and Stratton really specifies and, and likes to uh, have us duplicate for their systems. It's something that their maintenance department prefers. And we also have other various types of mechanism as far as this a simple escapement mechanism here. It's a very simple finger escapement. We're also doing some probing in the ID of this part here to show that there's no tumbling media in there. Uh, the next uh, application shows two flex tubes that we're doing a single bowl with a one to two shuttle and escape and blowing uh, the parts through some extruded tubing. The next application is a cross shuttle mechanism and you can see it's uh, for various parts. So there's a changeover required for this part with no tools required to do the changeover. So there's thumb screws to change the cross shuttle mechanism to flip it around to uh, the second part that we're feeding. And uh, again, no use of tools in order to do that. The next slide shows a Venturi type application where we're feeding a part out. It goes up to the Venturi and the Venturi blows the part to its destination. Again, another Venturi type application on the next slide. And then this other slide shows a uh, lift and locate mechanism. These parts tended to overlap. There was a bit really bad tolerance on these parts and these parts tended to overlap. And so you can see where we have a part come up to its dead nest here. And you can see the photo eye selecting the part that its part presence is available. The air jet behind the, the part for part number two in line would blow that second part off, relieving any back pressure. And then the mechanism would lift vertically to present the part for robotic pickup. And then we have a couple of packaging type applications where we get involved with uh, various timing screws. And you can see this is just some cutlery applications where we have uh, various forms of timing screws to be able to drop into uh, bagging type applications. Here at Fort Real Feeders, along with our engineered solution, we have the reputation of feeding very high risk parts at high speeds, and we also feed very large parts. We also get the reputation for high speed applications. This application here is for Nestle. We're feeding parts at 1100 parts per minute. Um, this is an FDA application. You can see it's all 316 stainless. Even the counterweights are stainless steel. 1100 parts per minute for the bottled water, uh, but very high speed applications. And um, this one is uh, 600 parts per minute. Um, I think we have 48 of these systems that we've built for the water bottles. So uh, a lot of water being manufactured for uh, distribution. This feed system is a 316 stainless steel bowl. It uh, has been electropolished. We also do various forms of passivation for FDA type applications. Uh, the next example, uh, accessory wise, is just various coatings for the bowl. This is a, a brush line coating. It's kind of a 3M uh, indoor outdoor carpet for parts that can't be marred or marked uh, for very light parts. Um, and it's also used for sound deadening. There's also some neoprene coatings that we, uh, that we adhere to the bowl that helps in sound deadening and wear. And there's just thousands of different types of urethane type coating as well. Um, this bowl shows that coating. Um, we also show some interchangeable tooling on this bowl as an accessory. Rather than have adjustable tooling for operators to have to adjust in and out and tweak and so forth, we just adhere the tooling to the bowl to where you can just bolt in this blade and remove this blade and the tooling stays with the bowl rather than possibly get it uh, misplaced if it's uh, mounted elsewhere. We also get involved with various other auxiliary type feed systems. This is a flex feed type system. This is a part that was, uh, was shrink wrapped and didn't have any real characteristics as far as being able to hold anything edge to edge. Uh, this was a pipette. It was a medical product. It was shrink wrapped and the product was dropped into bulk into a hopper and we had a various series of conveyors that conveyed the product up and brought it up a various series of cleated conveyors out to a single conveyor and then we had uh, interfaced with a robot and a vision system uh, to pick the parts that were good and place them into a box at a specific angle. 
parts that didn't orient properly were recirculated back and into the bulk supply hopper and uh, in turn recirculated through the system and, and placed properly. So again, uh, different types of feed systems, flex systems um, are, are certainly part of that profile. We also are trying to get a little bit further away from vibratory feeders as well and get into more linear type orientation type featured systems. So rather than have a fabricated vibratory feeder bowl, we're trying to get more into a mechanical linear type feed track that does the orientation. You can see here where the bowl is utilized strictly as kind of a bulk supply hopper and that the parts are fed out end to end at random onto a horizontal track. The horizontal track feeds the parts out and brings them across the machined selector and that machine selector makes the decision if it's a good or bad part. Bad parts are selected off and are sent into the return pan of the bowl and recirculated for another round of selection. And you can see uh, this is more of a mechanical type solution. Some engineers are a little bit more comfortable with this type of a solution where you can you can uh, take this, this uh, type of uh, track apart and put it back together rather than a hand fabricated type vibratory feeder bowl. This other slide here is just a, a little bit more of a uh, more elaborate type feeder where this part was a dental part. It had all radial. You had very little surface area to be able to do much selection with that part. And you can see the bowl again was utilized as a bulk supply hopper. The product was brought down to a, uh, this was a four track application, it was brought down to a linear section here. And uh, the linear section did all the orientation features and then brought it all the way down to uh, a four lane escapement device with the proper uh, linear orientation of the part. But again, utilizing the bowl for uh, bulk supply hopper and then utilizing the machined detailed mechanical track for the selection process. One other feature that we have for feeder bowls out away from our standard vibratory bowls is a step type feeder. And this is uh, where you have a bulk supply hopper and reciprocating plates to where the parts are brought up on the reciprocating plates up to a set of uh, linear tooling or parallels to where the product is selected again in a horizontal uh, track and any product that's not selected is recirculated back into the bulk supply hopper. These are for very limited type applications, but they are very attractive when you need a smaller profile rather than a vibratory feeder bowl. Uh, they tend to be a little quieter than vibratory feed systems. They are, from a cost standpoint, comparable as far as uh, the same amount of cost as a vibratory feeder, sometimes even more expensive. But you can see there are some advantages, but again, somewhat limited in their capabilities as far as what applications they can apply for. This slide here is for a, a small fastener. You can see it's a pretty small profile. The next slide goes to a much larger part for a coupling assembly, and you can see it's a pretty large part there. But again, same concept, bulk supply hopper, product coming up, through a hopper elevator into a set of parallels, parts that don't orient it going into bulk, the rest of the product coming out for uh, the pickup process. Let's talk a little bit about the understructure and framework and support systems for our feed systems. These are all standard components for us as far as our systems are concerned. I'm just gonna point a few things out. This is our standard frame table that you see here. And you can see it's a little bit thinner frame as far as the support table is concerned because the majority of our mass on our drive unit is in the drive unit itself. Uh, we have forklift tubes here for ease of moving our system around. Of course, the table frame. These are the vibration feet for the drive unit. This is the coil and the pole face for the drive unit itself, the spring banks. This is a, a flange mounted drive unit. You can see how it's a flat flange mounting here in comparison to some of our competition that does a tow mount, and we'll talk about that. And then these are our coils and our spring banks that you see here. All very strong welds throughout the drive unit in the base drive. And it also has a cross armless drive unit. And you'll see that in other portions of the, our, our presentation as far as the cross armless drive unit. But there's no cross arms underneath here. So if you would happen to break a spring or need to replace the spring bank, it's a very simple five minute changeover versus having to replace the bowl altogether and take this bowl off its structure you can very easily remove this spring bank and replace it without removing the feeder bowl itself. We have other various examples of accessories that we utilize with the feed systems. This is an accelerometer that you see here, 
what that does is this measures the amount of, of, of weight and stress that is being uh, forced upon the springs. So if you fill up the vibratory bowl with parts, um, normally you would go over and turn the variac up to be able to speed that bowl up to give it more force in order to allow it to, to get those, all that weight and all that product up and out of the bowl so that you could continue to run at a specific speed. But then you would have to turn that bowl back down because it's running too violent when you get low on parts and very low on weight. What this accelerometer does is it measures that weight and that stress on those springs and will compensate and it will speed up and slow down with the controller to allow for it to run at a consistent speed. We have various types of bulk supply hoppers. All of our hoppers are made out of 304 stainless steel. We also have a 316 FDA grade hopper as well. Our competition makes some of their hoppers out of a cold roll type steel that is painted and also has some types of contamination that can get involved with the bowl as that paint chips. With ours being 304 stainless steel, it is our standard for us across the board. You can see we take into consideration with our hoppers and the interface with the feeder bowl. This hopper, for instance, we're trying to feed into the return pan of the bowl to keep this load height down uh, so the operator doesn't have to load heights at a very high level. Um, our competition more often than not has the hopper sitting to it feeds into the center of the bowl in this area here. We lower it to this point here so we feed into the return pan of the bowl making it easier for the operators to interface with the bulk supply. Next slide shows a drag through type hopper elevator uh, where the load height is very low to the floor and the product is brought up the belted conveyor and the product is dropped into the bowl. We also do various gondola stands and tub dumpers. A lot of those are somewhat customized to the specific tub that we are dumping, but you can see in this application, um, you can see that uh, we've got the operator uh, putting the dunnage at the top of this unit, and it's uh, dropping the dunnage into our hopper in turn into our vibratory feeder bowl. This next slide is, is really intriguing. This is a hydraulic tub dumper that we have, so that the dunnage that you see here is put into the tub dumper. The tub dumper is actuated by the operator. It drops into our hopper elevator. The hopper elevator brings the product up. The elevator drops into the bowl. The bowl feeds. This was a, a dual um, threaded screw. One end of the screw was a coarse thread. The other end of the screw was a fine thread. We brought it down to a rotary actuator. We had a vision system that looked at the uh, threaded area and made a decision if it was coarse thread or fine thread rotated 180 degrees if it was the wrong uh, thread leading, and then brought it down to the next section of selection where we cross shuttled four of the uh, fasteners over and then we blew all four of the fasteners at one time to the receiver. So a lot of uh, mechanization that was going on there, I think we built three of these systems. But a good example of bulk supply material handling all the way through the mechanization. And the next slide's uh, just a little bit more as far as some of the bulk supply handling that we have. And then on the light side of things, uh, just a bulk supply hopper for marshmallows, for instance. This was a food processing. It was ice cream that we were actually handling, loading marshmallows into the ice cream uh, manufacturing facility. Uh, we get involved with uh, various types of FDA types applications, and uh, there's various levels and grades of FDA applications. Uh, we send this application out to the customer uh, to fill out just so we have a nice clear understanding of what the expectations are from all parties. Uh, there's different levels as far as clean room levels and by sending out this specification sheet it gives everybody a quick visual as to what uh, some of these expectations are and you can see here uh, the fill and grind with a polish uh, welded with no pits and a polish and seams with no cracks in a polish. But you can see these apply to all the various components and it's good for you and the, for the customer or the end user to go through here and check mark uh, what their expectations are as far as the FDA grade is concerned. So all the way through the drive unit, the uh, bowl construction itself, even the mounting feet, uh, the controls, the sound enclosure, everything uh, needs to be addressed as far as FDA levels are concerned. Uh, this is an example of a complete system. Uh, the table, even the stainless, the table itself was completely made and shrouded with stainless steel. 
This is a stainless steel track. You can see all the fasteners are stainless steel. It's in a washdown environment. Everything is stainless on it. And uh, again, another couple of examples of stainless applications. We'll move on to various track examples, linear track examples. Uh, we have, of course, our standard vibratory inline tracks, uh, flat belt type conveyor tracks, and uh, we have also air track uh, examples. And air tracks are, are becoming much more popular for us. Uh, we are getting involved with air tracks with our EDM machine here where we're putting a 30 thousandths hole at a 30 degree angle and extending our, the lengths of our tracks to whatever length we need for the application. But you can see in this example here, there's no obstruction underneath that, that track itself. So this track can extend all the way into the chassis of the assembly machine without any obstruction. You can also hold the tolerances very, very tight here in comparison to a vibratory track because of the fact that uh, the, uh, you can hold the part much closer uh, with flanges and so forth and not allowing flanges to overlap. If you have a vibratory track, you have to have about 10 or 15 thousandths clearance to allow that part to move in a vertical fashion to move down the track. With an air track, you can hold those tolerances much tighter and uh, the part will uh, still be able to be held edge to edge. It's very similar to like an air hockey type um, setup you had. This is another version of a uh, air track and this was a blow uh, forced air with a motor blowing the, uh, the air track in comparison to compressed air that you see in the previous slide. This was 10 feeder bowls lined up and uh, the parts would come down and it was a blower at the end. The only thing I'd advise in regards to this blower type application is those blowers are very loud, so you would probably need to shroud that for sound abatement purposes. This is a, just a very abrupt down 90 degrees track on this example here. Uh, you can see how the parts are coming out on the horizontal and then turning a very abrupt 90 degrees. Uh, then we have also um, a bubble type track with some O-rings here that come off of a single line out of the bowl and they bubble into four lines there. And then all sorts of different conveyor configurations and traffic control. In addition to the various coatings that we put on our vibratory bowls, we also have other forms of sound abatement. A sound enclosure, for instance, uh, this is a typical sound enclosure with Lexam windows and uh, panels. This door here has uh, the hush cloth on its, one of its dead panels. You can see a two inch thick uh, hush cloth here. We also have four inch thick hush cloth, depending on the uh, sound level that we're trying to, uh, to deaden. Uh, you can also get them with lockout features. You can get them with uh, lights inside the enclosure. They can be as large as they need to be if an operator needs to be able to get inside of them. The doors and panels can be made out of stainless steel. Uh, so there's really, there's no real limitation to whatever needs to be done as far as the sound enclosure is concerned. Our latest undertaking is MAC certification, Master Automation Craftsmanship. We're trying to hold ourselves to a higher overall standard of product manufacturing. It's a continuous improvement project to develop a better customer experience. There are five components of this program. Project management, craftsmanship, testing, delivery, and support. With our project management, we're holding ourselves accountable for making sure that we have that one point of contact from start to finish on our projects. Are we quoting each project correctly, sizing everything correctly, are all your milestones spelled out? Is the communication complete with your project manager and what's happening with your program? Our next step is our craftsmanship. How is the weld quality, the polish quality, the quality of the overall fabrication, the durability of the system, the neatness of the wiring? All those components come into play. We need to grade ourselves in each and every one of those components. The testing of the equipment. The testing comes into play. We have a 10-hour testing period prior to acceptance for a customer coming in. It's an independent division of our company. So we have to have a complete runoff acceptance procedure for 10 hours prior to the customer coming in and making sure that the system's ready for acceptance. Delivery. Are we meeting the milestones and the delivering of the timeline that the customer expects as far as acceptance and runoff prior to ship? And the overall support. Was there good training at the runoff? 
Was there e explanation of the various maintenance procedures that are required? Good uh, spare parts required in documentation of the spare parts? Any other concerns or issues as far as support for your project? We want to make sure that we adhere to all of those various components for the MAC certification. So that's really about it. I want to encourage everybody to please that we have an open door policy and you're certainly welcome to stop by our facility at any time. You don't really need an appointment, just you may want to call to make sure somebody's here to walk you through. 